Good morning, friends. Welcome back to my medical classes by Dr. Srimadhi Kumar Akhtar. I don't want to do subscribe to one of the available comments. You can also reserve the best time to go to the in a very systematic order. So this is quite convenient for the study, and you can make use of it. So thank you very much. So in the last class, we were discussing about uh, a clinical case related to muscular dystrophy. And we have seen the case part. We have discussed the present illness, past illness, family history, etc. So now this is the time for heading towards the diagnosis. Now, whenever you deal with such cases of muscular dystrophy, so what are the things to be considered? That is very important. So first you have to think, what is the anatomical diagnosis? Whether this particular disease is related to muscle, whether this particular disease is related to nerve, whether this disease is related to endocrinal system or some other anatomical parts of the body like respiratory system, etc. Now, by looking at the history part, it is quite clear that the anatomical diagnosis in this particular case study is muscle because there is weakness of the muscle and there is a loss of strength in the muscle. So, so many muscular symptoms are there. Proximal muscle groups are getting affected. So, all these facts are suggestive of disease of the muscle. So, now once the anatomical diagnosis, that is disease of the muscle, is over, I am thinking about microanatomical diagnosis. In the muscle, in which part of the muscles, which particular part of the muscles get affected? You know that as a whole muscle is get affected. In that muscle also, which particular part is get affected? Is it muscle? Or is it the nerve supplying to the muscle, especially neuromuscular junction, what we say neuromuscular junction? Or is it at the level of anterior horn cell, that is motor supply from the anterior horn cell to the muscle, each that is get affected? If it is a disease of the muscle fiber, if it is a disease of a sensory part of the muscle. So like this, this covers the microanatomical diagnosis. The first diagnosis, macroanatomical diagnosis, which says that this is the disease of the muscle. In the next part, which part of the muscle has to be identified. Now, in this particular case, when patient says that there is a difficulty in getting up from the sitting position. So, exactly this is the symptom told by the patient. So, patient is having difficulty in getting up from the sitting position. For the purpose of getting up from the sitting position, <clears throat> which group of the muscles are affected? That is very important. Okay, so when you are getting up, so you are doing activity against the gravity. So anti-gravity muscles of the body be there to have this function. Now suppose if the patient has got difficulty in getting up from the sitting position, it suggests that anti-gravity muscles of the body or the lower limbs are get affected. Usually the proximal muscles which are present in our lower limbs or upper limb, so they are considered as anti-gravity muscles. Proximal muscles. When I say in the thigh is the gluteal group of the muscles. Okay, so they are the anti-gravity muscles. So they act against the gravity and help you help you to stand up. So proximal muscle group, anti-gravity muscles or proximal muscle group is affected. So basically the problem is here. The proximal muscle group group weakness is there. So when the patient says that he has got difficulty in getting up. From the sitting position, it indirectly suggests that the proximal group of our muscles are experiencing weakness, especially in the lower limb. Okay. <clears throat> now the question is, this can also produce some skeletal problems. Okay. Getting up from a sitting position and patient is having difficulty on doing so may not be always because of muscular problems. Sometimes if the patient has got some bone problems, skeletal problems, for example, patient has got a uh, dysphasia of the hip, developmental dysphasia of the hip. So there also he may have difficulty in getting up from the sitting position. Okay. So how to rule out that condition? 
Now, usually, if it is because of the bone origin or what you say, skeletal origin, it may be associated with the pain. But in case of a simple proximal weakness because of the muscular dystrophy, you don't have any pain because sensory symptoms are totally absent in muscular dystrophy. Only motor symptoms will be present. So there is no pain. But even in skeletal problems also, it is not always that patient is experiencing pain. Sometimes this problem may exist where the patient is unable to get the function without pain also. Without pain also, this will be seen. But when you see that, observe that proximal muscles are get affected more. That means the adductor muscles, obturator muscle, gluteus group of the muscles, iliosaurus muscles, quadriceps muscles. So they are all comes under the category of proximal group of the muscles, and they are also the anti gravity muscles. Okay, so. This is one important thing that you have to identify. Of course, you have to differentiate from the bone problems. If it is really the bone problem, you will have some other history also apart from this. Okay. So again, that problem may be acutely started if it is a bone problem or maybe chronically it is present, associated with the pain, associated with some other deformities. So these things will be there if it is really a skeletal problem due to unable to get up. But in case of muscular dystrophy, you don't have such symptoms. Simply, patient will have problem with the proximal group of the muscles. <coughs> so, when there is one of the muscular groups, proximal, proximal muscle group, uh, most commonly it is uh, uh, estimated that it is lower motor neuron lesion. Now, in the muscle, we have got two parts, isn't it? One is distal part, and one is uh, what you say, <coughs> proximal part. Similarly, in the limb, if you take, there is a distal group of the muscles and proximal group of the muscles. Usually, if the patient is suffering from lower motor neuron lesion, it is observed that usually the proximal group of the muscles are more affected. If the patient is suffering from any upper motor neuron symptoms, that is nerve symptoms, okay, if the patient is having neuropathy, mostly the distal group of the muscles are get affected. Now, when there is involvement of the muscles, proximal, mostly, uh, the commonly upper motor neuron, uh, uh, proximal involvement, mostly lower motor neurons are get affected. And in the upper motor neuron lesion, you don't have more myopathies, rather than you will have neuropathies. That means mostly nerves, they are long nerves, okay. So therefore, they travel for a long distance, so distal most part. So if it is some problem there in the distal most part of the body, so usually it is the neuropathy. But if it is in the proximal part of the muscle or the proximal part of the body, most of the time it suggests towards um, uh, myopathy. So of course, some exceptions are there. So this is one possibility that we have derived out of this particular case. Okay, this may be a disease of the muscle, in that muscles also, in this particular case, it is proximal group of the muscles are better affected. Therefore, this case would be most probably a case of a muscular disorder. Okay, because proximal group or anti gravity group of muscles are getting affected. Now come to the second possibility. What will the second possibility in this particular case? Second possibility is same. So, why should insist on muscle problem? I will say this is a nerve problem. Now you have to prove that this is not a nerve problem. Okay. Now, there are different types of proximal neuropathies are there. For example, demyelinating neuropathy. Most of the other neuropathies are distal in nature as they are length dependent. Except demyelinating neuropathy, which is proximal like GB syndrome, chronic demyelinating disorder, etc. Now, in the last slide, what I told is if the distal involvement is there, most commonly it is neuropathy. If the proximal involvement is there, most commonly it is myopathy. But some exceptions are again there. There are some neuropathies which is proximal. There are so many neuropathies which is proximal. One of the best examples is demyelinating neuropathies. Any type of demyelinating neuropathies. Neuropathies because of demyelination usually start from the proximal side, not from the distal side of the nerves. Okay. So demyelinating neuropathies, most of the most of the time it starts from the proximal side. Okay. And, uh, but the maximum other neuropathies, what we see, okay, except demyelinating neuropathies. So they are 
digital in nature. Okay. But there are a few examples, for example, demyelinating neuropathies. Now, what are the things which comes under demyelinating neuropathies? The most common, GP syndrome. GP syndrome is a demyelinating neuropathy. Okay? So, that starts proximally. Okay? Similarly, chronic demyelinating disorders. So, they also start proximally. So, this is one exception that we have to understand. Okay? So, although muscular dystrophy most commonly starts from the proximal part of the body, they are myopathies. Sometimes, some of the neuropathies can also begin from the proximal side of the muscle. Okay? So, this is a second possible. So, this may be even in neuropathy. We need to differentiate it. Now, it can be from the level of the anterior horn cell. Okay, the muscle weakness is there. The problem is there in the anterior horn cell because anterior horn cell is not supplying the alpha, al the alpha fibers which is supplied from the anterior horn cell as a part of the motor uh, component of the lower motor neuron uh, tract. So, if the anterior horn cells are affected, okay, then also there may be weakness of the muscle. Okay, why it should be only dystrophy? It may be because of the anterior horn cell problems also. So usually we consider this problem as spinomuscular disorders. We might have been heard the name of spinomuscular atrophy, the same. Okay. So here anterior horn cells are get affected. Okay. So if it is a disease of the anterior horn cell, okay, then the most striking feature is atrophy. There should be atrophy. Because motor part is not a normal. As the motor activity is not taking place, so there may be problem with the activity of the muscle and muscle undergo atrophy. Okay, it is what is it is sir? atrophy is the most important symptom. Okay, this is one junction, one problem. Another is this can be also the problem of neuromuscular junction. Anterior horn cell is okay, upper motor neuron is okay, lower motor neuron is okay, even the muscle is okay. But only the problem is the junction of nerve and muscle. There is some exchange problem is there. And Signals are not properly transmitted. We usually call this particular symptom or presentation as a neuromuscular junction disorders. One of the best examples is myasthenic disease. Myasthenic disease is the best example. Okay? So, but what you have to understand, if it is a myopath or muscular weakness, due to neuromuscular junction problem, then waxing and waning type of weakness will be seen. That means, in the morning when the patient child starts working, he is able to work normally for one or two hours. As the time passes, he starts being fatigue in muscles and at the end of the day he is totally floppy. Okay? So this particular problem is typically seen, presentation is typically seen in this of neuromuscular junction disorders. So in this case, it is not the presentation. Therefore, it is not a neuromuscular junction disorder. It is not an anterior horn cell disorder because there is no atrophy. Okay? It is not a skeletal problem because there is no other associated symptoms, pain, etc., or limping, etc. Okay. So, now, uh, most likely, this point towards the muscle atrophy. Again, the things can be confirmed. Now, in adults, sometimes, suppose you are talking about adults, many times, a COPD patients, chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder patient, and other chronic disorders like chronic kidney disorders, may also come with the proximal muscle weakness. See, we are only discussing about the pro proximal muscle weakness. Okay, although proximal we muscle weakness is one of the striking features of a muscular dystrophy, it can be seen in so many other conditions. Even in adults also, adults with a chronic disorders like COPD, kidney disorders, etc., sometimes they may also feel the proximal muscle weakness. Of course, we are not dealing with adults, they are only children. Sometimes one who is taking steroid, child who is on steroid, he may also feel proximal muscle weakness. Okay, for example, there are uh, nephrotic syndrome, patient is taking uh, steroids. So, at times he may also have a presentation of proximal muscle weakness. One more possibility is fracture. Sometimes there is a fracture. Okay, if the fracture is more towards the proximal, but definitely the patient will have a problem with the proximal movement and proximal muscle movement. So, also to rule out this is uh, one is a fracture. One more is we need to rule out a true muscular disease and psychogenic muscular disease. Okay. This is muscular weakness or uh, uh, fatigueness of the muscles. So that may be psychogenic also. But many times it is true also. So that means true muscular disease and a psychogenic muscular disease has to be also distinguished. Okay. 
So this is the second possibility. First possibility we have seen is the disease of the muscle and all. But when we come to the second possibility, you have got so many. Only proximal muscle weakness is seen in so many conditions. Okay? So there are so many variations are there in the medical field. So there is no any fixed uh, frame. So what is most likely? So we have seen all the variables, all the possibilities. Now, what will be the most likely problem in this case? Based on the history, it is most likely to be a muscle disease only. So, in the last class we have discussed the history. In the history, it is clear that it is only the muscle disease. If you look into the history and then correlate, it looks like it is a muscle disease. Because, if it is an anti cell disease, what happens? The distal movements are more and there will be thinning of the limbs as I told, atrophy will be there. Okay. If it is a neuromuscular junction problem, fatigability will be there, but fatigability will be more in the evening and less in the morning hours. That is called as waxing and waxing type of muscle weakness. Okay. Uh, if it is a underhorn cell disease, again, there will be fasciculations and also a little asymmetrical and atrophy will be seen. As sensory involvement is not at all there, now suppose very important, you will enter a horn cell disease, although motor cells, the motor fibers will get affected <coughs> basically, it also affects the sensory problem also. So here in this case, there is no sensory issues at all and the muscular dystrophy is not a sensory problem, it is typically not a problem. Okay, so as sensory involvement is not there, so it rules of most of the nerve involvement disorders. So involvement of the nerve is, the chance is very less because if there is involvement of the nerve is there, sensory problems will be there, tingling sensation, pain, etc. So such symptoms are absent here. So totally taking a point towards the motor problem, most likely a muscular problem. So but we have many nerve disorders with pure motor neuropathy without sensory involvement. Again, one more clause is there. I that if there is that means there is no <coughs> if there is no sensory involvement it mostly suggests towards a muscular problem but again you have got many disorders with pure motor neuropathy that means we have got so many nerve disorders but the muscles are affected one of the best examples is GB syndrome they are demyelinating neuropathies porphyria a metabolic problem porphyria so these are the conditions where we have got motor neuromuscular muscular myopathy is there with the nerve involvement. Okay, myopathy with the nerve involvement will be there. One more important thing is uh, the history is also suggestive of Gower cell. History is also suggestive of the Gower cell. So this particular part that will go to in the next class. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.